Hello and greetings everyone. I really appreciate the time that you take to watch my videos. And today I welcome you to the fourth episode of Vikings Debunked, the show about BBC's Vikings, where I tell you where they did well, where they did bad. And today we will speak about a general topic, namely armor in Vikings. Now this is a topic that a lot of fans may notice and definitely a lot of the HEMA community will be furious about and rage about it and I'm pretty sure it is something that could easily have been done much better by BBC. The thing is the following. In the Viking era armor was very well developed and more importantly the Vikings better the Norse people, because Vikings, well, they will make another video about that, the Vikings actually had the best armor of their time and era. For the whole Viking era, the Vikings had the best armor of all Europe. They had slightly better chainmail, I mean chainmail is still chainmail, but the Vikings produced it in a way that made it slightly better than chainmail everywhere else, and most importantly they were very, very, very well known for their great advanced helmets, like this one in the back. Those helmets were so famous that they really got worship, almost worshipped for their great helmets, because the helmets that the Vikings used were so advanced that they, other European countries produced helmets of similar qualities about 200 to 300 years after the Viking era. So the Vikings had helmets that were almost 300 years ahead of their time and that's something that they really were proud of and that added a lot to their success because the helm is the most important part of the armor. The head is the most vulnerable part of the body in the fight. It is very very vulnerable to damage of all kinds. A blow to anywhere on the body is not nearly as dangerous as a hit to the head. If you manage to hit the head, the fight is basically over. Not just that it's easier to knock someone out if you hit him in the head than if you hit him in the hand. Uh, it's also much more likely that you will die from a head injury and it's much more likely that you will suffer severe disadvantages after receiving a blow to the head and for the fighting itself I don't know how much fighting you did in your life but Muhammad Ali put it very well everyone has a plan until they take a hit to the head and that's very true what he said because once you receive a blow to the head you are for a short time confused you have no plan the hell what's going on what did I want to do and it makes you distracted for long enough that your opponent is allowed to have a killing blow because for the three or four seconds that you are distracted you will have a very bad reaction and there you can just go and kill the guy. So the helmet was the most important important part of the armor and the Vikings had great helmets and yet in the serious Vikings we don't see a single Viking with a decent helm. Actually it's very rare to see it any Viking that uses a helm at all and that is very disturbing and it is very unnecessary because Viking helmets as you can see leave about everything be below the nose almost completely free so you can still see facial expressions that are mostly done with the area around the mouth very well. The eyes, the eye openings are quite huge to allow for a great vision while also protecting the eyes, but you can still see very well how the eyes move, what the eyes do, the expression of the eyes. You see all that through the helmet. A great example is the movie Beowulf and Grendel, I think it was made in 2005, and that's actually a replica of the helmet used in the movie by the main character. And even though all of these characters in there wear these helmets, you still see the facial expressions they have perfectly. You see their emotions, you see what they look like as they look in horror in something that they see. These helmets do not distract so much from the facial expression. You can wear those helmets without sacrificing much of your ability to express emotions through your face. 
it could have been done easily and it would be very authentic because those are helmets that Vikings actually used. And they had such great helmets like the Gjermundbu helmet or the, uh, the Vandal helmet they, that are so famous even today. And yet they don't have any and that's very disturbing. But what's really, really bad is the armor in general. I mean, I haven't, I've barely seen a Viking in any kind of armor at all. Most Vikings we see approach an enemy army. They know they are going to fight. They know they are having a lethal, pot uh, deadly combat and they walk up in their everyday clothes. They wear the leather stuff you would wear for hunting. They wear normal boots. They don't wear any kind of hand protection and of course no helmet. And who can, how can we take such warriors seriously? Imagine, do you know these pictures of failblock.org where there are guys who are policemen, two of them armed with real weapons and a third one stands behind them with a finger gun, with a friggin' finger gun. He tries to threat, he tries to threat the criminal with a finger gun. I mean, that's ridiculous and that's exactly what the Vikings in the show look like. They look like farmers, they look like broke beggars that came to back gold from the city, not to fucking sack it and regret it. And they just look horrific. I mean, I do understand that if the Viking series is set in the very early Middle, uh, Middle Ages or in the very early Viking period, that chainmail wasn't so common that everyone could afford it. But really, the Jarls definitely were able to afford chainmail and good chainmail. And Ragnar, even in the very first episode, as he owns quite a lot of land and quite fertile land, was definitely able to get something better than studded leather. I mean, studded leather is a topic in itself, but really, it doesn't look good, it doesn't protect well, it's actually very bad, and it's the poor man's last resort if he doesn't have anything else to cover himself with. And, I mean, almost everyone runs around with leather, with leather not even leather armor, just leather clothing. And that's just bullshit. And besides, it brings, brings up another point, some don't even wear that. I mean, they go to war in a woolen shirt or in terms of Rolo. I mean, come on, he fights almost nude. He has trousers and nothing else. What's that supposed to be a warrior? I know, it is supposed to be a berserker, because berserkers were nude. No, that's Roman propaganda that is 2,000 years old, almost 2,000 years old. It's not the truth. We know from various sagas that the berserkers that were named berserkers and called berserkers and fought like berserkers wore armor. They at least, if they were poor, at least wore fur. That's one possibility where the name Berserker actually comes from, which means could have meant bear, uh, beer shirt, bear shirt. So yeah, that's okay. Could be. However, they did show up in armor for a fight. They did wear, if nothing else, chain mail. I can understand, as I'm a practitioner of the Berserker Gander myself, that you don't want to have a fur on you if you are going to fight, because overheating is a real issue in that state, but you can perfectly veil chainmail without anything underneath it. It will reduce its protective value quite a bit, but it will still have protective value, and it's still the best you have against slashing weapons. And it, that is still very decent against slashing weapons, it's quite bad against uh, weapons that cause some blunt damage, but against cutting damage it's perfect. And you want to wear at least that. Besides, if you are using a two-handed weapon, which occurred more in the late Viking period, uh, you want to have decent hand protection or a really long weapon, like the Dane axe that the Danes famously used was friggin' long. It was, I think, about three to four meters long and with such a weapon you can keep enough distance that the hand protection isn't, isn't so valuable. And in later periods we also see that people who 
are using two-handed weapons actually use gauntlets. Now, I know in the Viking era that wouldn't be common. Chainmail gauntlets were around, could have been used, and definitely were used in such cases. But your fingers are very, very vulnerable if you're using two-handed weapons. I could show you with this thing in the background. It's really, if you grab it, the, the point closest to your enemy is your fingers. The most vulnerable point of your entire body in that case are the fingers. And the fingers are one of the most important points of the body as well. If you cut my fingers, I can't hold my weapon. If I can't hold my weapon, I'm defeated. That's why it's so important to have finger protection. However, in case of the Vikings, really they should have put those guys wearing two-handed weapons in very good armor because a shield provides enough uh, cover from arrows, and arrows were used massively in the Viking era, and the shields were mainly there to block incoming arrows. That's the main reason for them. I mean, you can do a lot with shields, especially with Viking shields, like hiding your weapon and do certain cool maneuvers and bash someone with it, but really the main purpose was to block incoming arrows, blocking weapons. You can do that, but your shield will get damaged quite badly, and depending on the weapon you have, you can also block and parry with the weapon. However, the shield's coverage from arrows. Chainmail, if it is good chainmail, will also protect you from arrows well enough. I mean, good chainmail can protect you from pretty much all arrows that come at you. Exceptions are bows with a very, very strong draw weight, like the English longbows, they can go through chainmail, and they later on, in I think it was later than the uh, Viking period, they evolved certain shaped arrows, like the Botkin arrows, that had needle heads that would go in between the rings. But good, decent chainmail protects you perfectly from arrows, so everyone without the shield will have as much chainmail on his body as possible, just to prevent getting shot by an arrow. Now that that is set, <coughs> back to the armor in Vikings. What do they wear? No chainmail, just free leather stuff. In war, I mean, at home, okay, sure, yeah, why not? At war, when raiding, invading a country, really, you should have given them decent armor. And I know that the budget of Vikings was so huge that you could have easily, easily have made very good looking armor for at least the main characters. And no, not knitted mail, I speak about actual chainmail. I mean, come on, chainmail armor is quite cheap. You can get a full set of chainmail armor from chainmail pants, chainmail gloves, chainmail chest, uh, a chainmail shirt for, depending on where you look, 80 euros already. If you are a studio making a film, you can surely get some discount because you are ordering so much, so let's say 60 euros per complete chainmail set. I mean, it, it isn't expensive. You could easily afford that. You could easily have given your actors decent looking clothing and decent cl uh, looking armor for battles without ruining your entire budget for the whole series. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay with me for the next video and please rate and comment this video as it helps me to improve. Thanks for watching, see you next time.